Hello and welcome to Alan History Nerd. In this video I'm going to be looking at an exciting new course that we're going to be offering at Thomas Rotherham College and this is ancient history. So this is something very different from what we're doing already but has the same kind of foundations in skills. Ancient history gives us an incredible breadth of really exciting and interesting information to look at. We meet lots of amazing characters and, and essentially an insight into a slightly insane and different world but also an insight into the world that we have around us now because an awful lot of the stuff even in the modern day we can trace back to the incredible actions of the Greeks and Romans. So what is ancient history? Well ancient history is the study of the world of, of ancient Greece and ancient Rome, the Roman Empire and the Roman Republic before it. In A-level uh, ancient history, you will study two different periods of Greek history and two periods of Roman history. And I'm going to try and very briefly outline what those are in a second. So you're getting a mixture of ancient Greece and, and ancient Rome. And again, both of which are absolutely fascinating. Now, within all of this, we get some kind of really big questions which we get to answer and to think about. So we get to think about what is democracy and democracy's roots are in ancient Greece with um, demos uh, meaning people and krasi meaning power. So essentially it's power of the people. We get to look at why why Rome essentially elected itself a dictator, which seems like an odd, interesting thing to do. But again, we get to see some of the interesting history and stuff behind it. So we see why Athens um, decided to kill the cleverest man in the world, who was Socrates. So how how could a great philosopher get to the point that essentially he's condemned to, to death by a democracy? Uh, we'll look at why the Romans persecuted Christians whilst uh, whilst having a multitude of gods themselves. We'll look at why uh, the first democracy, which was Athens, became an empire and, and then why that empire collapsed. We'll, we'll ask why is the basis of our legal system the Roman system and we'll look at the, the, the Roman uh, legal system and we'll look at uh, important legal figures in the Roman world such as Cicero. Um, we'll ask why did Caligula get the Roman army to collect seashells? Now Caligula was, was one of the Julio Claudian emperors and he decided he was going to invade Britain and then he realised he didn't have any boats uh, and so he had to go back and he had to show off his, his, his great triumph so he decided to show that he defeated the sea. And once you'd learn more of Caligula you'll realise why not the people didn't make a big fuss and go you're mad because that wouldn't have been a very wise thing to say to Caligula. Though it probably would have been true. Um, and we're going to look at uh, Nero and how he's made an incredible mess of killing his own mother and obviously other interesting questions like why did he want to kill his own mother? Uh, Nero possibly the most infamous of the, the Julio Claudians and, and, and again the story of, of how uh, how he played the fiddle whilst Rome burned and, and, and how much truth uh, there is in that. And you'll find out also um, what crime you could be tied in a sack with snakes and thrown into the river for. Uh, and it might not just be snakes, it could be a dog and all kinds of different animals in there. So again, an important part of old, uh, old law codes uh, for you in that. So there is lots of really, really interesting stuff and, and, and it's incredibly varied and, and, and diverse world, the Roman and Greek world, and, and the, the, the cultures of the different states and things is again a really fascinating bit and, and how it develops and how it changes over large periods of time again gives you a really in, a real insight into this ancient world. So the Greeks um, that uh, you'll study, one of the first units is the relation between the Greek states, uh, the Greek states and non-Greek states from 492 to 404 BC, in particular looking at Sparta, Athens and Persia. And the image above me is from the Battle of Thermopylae, which you might know more in terms of uh, the 300, when the 300 Spartans stood against the uh, Persian army. And there's been a film made of it, all kinds of exciting stuff. It's an incredible, uh, incredible story. 
So this is one of uh, the most famous periods of Greek history. You will see how the disparate city-states in Greece, led by Athens and Sparta, defeated the overwhelming uh, power of the Persian Empire. Uh, how focus then how, how that alliance broke apart, leading to Athens, the first democracy, becoming an aggressive imperialistic state, and, and Sparta taking Persian money to, to defeat Athens. And the, the culture and the differences between Sparta and Athens are absolutely fascinating. And Sparta, again, it, 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 in this world of, of, of kind of military um, domination compared to the kind of philosophy and democracy of Athens. And it, again, a really in, in, intriguing part. And this is where we see the emergence of kind of European power in, in the face of uh, aggression coming over from this mighty Persian Empire. The second Greek um, unit you look at is the rise of, of Macedon, um, so the rise of Macedonia. Uh, and in this, you look at, at first at Philip, who rose from obscurity, uniting the Greeks under his rule, in inverted commas. Uh, and then you, then you look at the life of probably um, one of the most famous people ever, Alexander. Not only just Alexander, but Alexander the Great, an amazing, amazing military leader. Uh, and how he, he defeated the enormous Persian arm, Empire and then just kept on going. And he made his way all the way to India, creating one of the, the greatest empires of all time and then died aged just 32. And and the story of um, the story of Alexander is, is an incredible one. And, and it's some of it is, is about his, his mili military engineer, um, his military tactics, some of it about his just kind of cleverness and the, the uh, untying of the Gordonian knot and all kinds of exciting things like that. So Alexander is, is a really fascinating character. At the Roman period you look at as well, and, and to start off with, you'll look at uh, the breakdown of the late Republic from 88 to 31 BC, uh, and you will uh, see how the, the Roman Republic, once it defeated all its rivals in the Mediterranean, turned on itself and collapsed into civil war and strife. And in this, you will look at uh, famous figures, notably Cicero and also Cato and Crassus and Pompey and Brutus and Marcus Antonio and Julius Caesar. And then following on from Caesar, we see the man who, who ended the Republic and created the empire, who is Augustus. Now, and Augustus is, is, is an incredible character. Uh, and uh, again, I always think one of the most politically uh, clever men in, in kind of like the entirety of history. So the, the breakdown of the late Republic and, and, and the rise of the empire is an incredible bit. And it, it kind of, you know, those kind of concepts sound a bit Star Wars eaters because this is where they nicked a load of the ideas from. So we've got some really, really interesting stuff. There's some, there's some of those characters are amazing. Cicero, again, another favorite of mine, a really interesting character. And we've got loads of stuff from his writings that you'd look at in detail. You then move on with the Romans to look at the Julio-Claudians. And so the, these are the emperors. They're the first line of emperors. So you start with Augustus and you then go into Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius and Nero. And they are mad and they are bad. A lot of them. And Augustus is, is, is a politically brilliant, not necessarily particularly pleasant, but politically brilliant. And, and the, the, the rest is... A, well, is, is generally a complete, it leads to complete chaos in one way or another, but also a great, great deal of success for Rome. So these are some of the greatest, most famous characters in history, um, all from the same extended family. They first consolidated uh, power of what had been the Republic into their hands and then expanded their empire. Uh, and there are lots of great, great stories about whether Caligula, according to, 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 to some stories, uh, made a um, made his horse a senator and gave it his own house and then it threw parties in its name and everybody had to come and pay due homage to the horse because it was really of high status. And, and, and we see the persecution of the Christians and we uh, we see Nero raising uh, raising armies and, 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 and fighting against um, fighting against, against rebels and all kinds of different things. So the Julio Claudians are really, really important part of um, the Roman and European history and, and a, a really interesting one again with some uh, really amazing characters in it. So ancient history, you are studying stuff that happened a very, very, very long time ago. So, so what, what can it help you with? Why, why is it still so relevant today? Well, ancient history prepares you for a wide range of university courses as it develops your skills of evaluation, analysis and critical thinking. Um, courses include ancient or modern history, archaeology, English literature. Uh, politics would be another one. Law would be another one. So there are a whole range of, of kind of courses where they would look at this and kind of go, well, actually, you've got the right basis of skills for what we want you to do. 
and ancient history is also a very strong supporting um, subject for many university courses due, due to the high regard it, it is held in. Uh, and as I said, an awful lot of what we see in the modern day, particularly in things like politics and law, uh, but also very broadly in culture, a lot of that stuff comes out of um, the ancient world. And, and so, so for having that kind of cultural capital of understanding the kind of the origin story of all of the, this and, and kind of European culture, and European history it is a real advantage for an, an awful wide range of kind of arts here or humanities based subjects. Um, the skills developed allow students to follow careers in teaching, tourism, heritage, journalism, local government, management, um, so a whole range of different jobs. But one of the things I, we, we always say is, is it's always very important to remember is, is what you need to do is you need to get really good qualifications. You get, if you do things that you're really interested in, the better grades and things you're likely to get. The skills base is really broad. You don't necessarily have to go into a job which directly relates uh, to the subjects unless you really want to, but it will open lots of doors. As an A-level, it is highly regarded by all universities, including the Russell Group Universities in Oxford, Oxford and Cambridge, and so it is going to open an awful lot of doors for you. So thank you um, very much for watching. I, I'm hoping that this will have been uh, really helpful to you and, and and giving you some insight into what ancient history would be like and whether and uh, whether it's something you'd want to come and study at Thomas Rotherham College. Um, the channel has got uh, lots of content on all our, uh, a lot of our other courses as well. So a lot of our, our history course stuff is on here. There's also loads of stuff for our politics course on here as well. So if you haven't done so already, then please do subscribe. And obviously we will add more stuff relevant to this and other courses as we go through. Thank you very much for watching.